Home Assistant's 10th release of the year is landing today, 2025.10, and this month adds even more wake words for voice, image generation, smarter suggestions in dashboards, and even more polish. First up though, we are talking about automations once again. So last release, Home Assistant revamped the automation editor to make it cleaner and easier to work with, particularly for larger automations by adding a new sidebar as well as other visual cues. And this release expands on this even further by taking your feedback that was generated last month and improving lots of little things in this release. The first improvement is that the sidebar is now resizable so that you can easily drag to make it bigger or smaller if you are working on something particularly complex instead of it just being a single fixed size. Next, copy and paste has also been added to the new blocks, which is awesome. So if you want to copy a block and use it somewhere else in your automation, you can now simply highlight the block, hit Ctrl plus C, and then find a block you want to paste it next to, highlight that and hit Ctrl V to paste, and it's gonna go in right underneath the block that you highlighted. That is a really, really nice quality of life improvement. And also on the same train, you can now undo and redo changes with a shortcut too. If you delete a bunch of blocks or make some changes in the automation that you're editing, you can now hit Control Z to instantly undo that change, which is so cool. And this can actually undo up to the last 75 actions you did, so it has got quite a large buffer for any unintended mistakes. You can, of course, redo an action by hitting Control Y to redo a step, and this is such a cool addition along with the copy and paste. Finally, in the previous release, the three dots for the overflow menu on a block that allowed you to, for example, run an action or copy a block were moved into the sidebar in the last release, but after some community feedback, this is now back on the block as of this release too. Moving on to dashboards in this release, you will remember that last month they added a new experimental dashboards called the home dashboard, which was a new way of auto-generating your dashboard with a summaries view along with areas and then each device grouped by device category. This release expands that dashboard by adding a commonly used devices section on the homepage, which will display devices that you interact with most and display them in a convenient way for you to just get quick access to them without having to go hunting around for them. They say that it will show the most used devices over the previous 24 hours and only show you them depending on the hour of the day and only if they are relevant using a basic algorithm for now, which will presumably be expanded in the future. So that is a pretty cool addition. A couple of other UI bits. Firstly, the more info dialogue for media players has been completely revamped to a cleaner and nicer to use layout, which I do really like the look of. Actually it reminds me of like the media player interface on the Google, mm, what are they called again? The Google Nest display. That actually had a really nice media interface on, which this really reminds me of. And also if you go over into the history panel and then you zoom in or scroll out on an entity, it's gonna keep all of the other entities in sync and kind of zoom in on them too, where previously it would only zoom in on the currently focused entity. This makes it much easier to track events across multiple devices. While we're in here actually, the logbook panel over in the sidebar has now been renamed to activity as of this release. Finally, if you are editing YAML inside of the UI, for example, on an automation, the YAML window now has a little toolbar on it, which will show you the full screen along with the copy and undo buttons. Nice. Next, voice is getting a nice improvement in this release, which is that devices like the Home Assistant Voice PE now support multiple wake words. This is really useful, for example, if you live in a multi-language household, or even if you want to do some fancy stuff around local and LLM commands, since it supports having a different voice pipeline for the second wake word, 
So you could do something like have a wake word that is for local commands only, and then a second wake word that is for LLM commands. Or actually, I just thought of this, you could even do like one wake word for an open AI pipeline and a different wake word for a Claude pipeline, for example, if you wanted to do some back-to-back -back testing or something like that. But anyways, this is a great new feature that I think a lot of people wanted to see, especially for multi-language households. This is gonna be a big improvement. Also for voice in this release, you know if you ever asked Assist to turn off the lights or turn on the TV, it would always respond with a phrase saying, Turned off the lights. which is kind of silly if you're already in the room and you can literally see that the lights were turned off. Uh, and if you've ever used Google Home or Amazon actually, you would know that they don't have this verbal confirmation either. So as of this release, if you ask for something to happen in the room you are already in, Assist will no longer give you that verbal confirmation and it will just give a short beep instead, which I think is a nice improvement. It would actually be cool if you could configure this behavior in the future on a per room or per assist basis, but this is a nice improvement over just always playing the full verbal response. Finally, for the big stuff, we head over to AI land. Home Assistant gets a new AI feature in this release, which is that LLMs can now generate images in Home Assistant using a new action or service called AI Task Generate Image. Now, you need to ensure that you have an LLM set up inside of Home Assistant already and that the model you are using supports image generation, either from OpenAI or Google Gemini or similar. But once you have done that, you can then prompt for images inside of Home Assistant and have it generate things uh, that you can show in your dashboards or in other places in Home Assistant. And JLo actually has a great demo of how to use this over on the Home Assistant YouTube channel with a fun example of using AI to describe his doorbell feed image and then passing that into the image generation service to create a cartoon rendition of his doorbell feed. Obviously just a bit of fun, but there is some potential useful use cases there. I do recommend that video, that's a good video. Shout out JLo. I would actually love to hear if you have any ideas of what this feature could be used for in your setups down in the comments. I think it does have some quite useful uh, potentials inside of Home Assistant. As for little things this month, firstly, the analog clock added in last release gets a new option to display smooth motion on the seconds hand. Lawnmower entities now support start mowing and docking sentences for using with voice. The Philips Hue integration now supports their new motion aware sensors on the new Hue Bridge Pro. The Matter integration now has support for occupancy sensing hold time, climate running state for heating and cooling fans, vacuum area actions and thermostat outdoor temperature sensors. And finally, the Tasmota integration now supports camera functionality. As for new integrations this month, we see a rather large 11 integrations added in this release, which is awesome to see. And we also see two integrations moved over from YAML into the UI. As for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, we have a fairly short list this month, which is great. Nothing major here, just some more minor tweaks or uh, deprecation to make sure that it is applicable to your setup. But just make sure to have a read for yourself to make sure nothing applies to you before updating. And that's about it for this release. Can't believe we only have two releases left for this year. This year has went so fast, but a great release nonetheless. My favorite feature from this release is probably low-key the undo feature in the automation editor, along with the copy and paste. Absolutely love that. And that's gonna be a very useful feature for me personally. Of course, do let me know your favorite feature from this release down in the comments. Oh, and before I forget, did want to just drop you a quick note for those of you still watching at this point. If you have been looking to get something from the shop, either an EP1 or a light or anything else, we're actually gonna be having a flash sale very soon. So if you have been waiting to, for some money off to grab something, I did just want to give you a heads up for you dedicated listeners. 
keep your eyes peeled for that happening very soon, just in the next couple of days. Make sure to subscribe to the newsletter over in the shop to get notified or keep your eyes peeled on the YouTube community posts. I will try and post it there for those of you who keep an eye on the YouTube community posts. Uh, just make sure that you don't miss it and make sure to take advantage of that if you have been waiting for a discount. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.